Hello friends and uh, welcome to this last class for the week 10 where we will be talking about alternate uh, some of the alternate wastewater treatment system. So, uh, in the previous classes of this week we did talk about the basic idea of the uh, how the conventional treatment systems are laid out and then we did talk about the alternate systems in the forms of wetland then we did talk about the SBR and uh, SBBR. This class we are going to uh, discuss the MBR which is membrane bioreactors and uh, MBBR which is uh, moving uh, bed biofilm reactors. So, that is what we are going to uh, discuss in this uh, particular uh, class. So, the membrane bioreactors are uh, basically a combination of uh, suspended growth biological systems usually the activated sludge process which is used with the membrane filtration equipment. Okay. So, this membrane filtration equipment it is uh, means we will have the traditional conventional treatment system okay. and uh, what we do for the separation uh, purpose in the say typical activated sludge process. So, in activated sludge process for the separation we have a secondary clarifier which separates the solid content or uh, sludge mass with the water. So, the sludge mass is separated from the water in a secondary sediment in a secondary clarifier or secondary sedimentation tank in a conventional activated sludge process, but the efficiency of the secondary settling basin may not be very good. Okay. So, uh, that is why we may still get some solids wash out in the effluent. Now, what is done and then uh, the other uh, aspect is that we have to kind of recycle the sludge back to the activated sludge systems. Now, what alternatively is done in a MBR that instead of going for a settling basin, secondary settling basin, a membrane is put, a semi permeable membrane is put which allows usually water to pass through, but retains the solid. Okay. So, that way it is a combination of your typical say activated sludge process. Uh, with membrane filtration equipment for the separation of solid purpose. And since we are dealing with wastewater, so usually high end membranes like RO or uh, nano filters are not used. What is used is either micro filtration uh, membranes or ultra filtration membranes. So, these are relatively low pressure membranes. So, that is why they are preferred. So, these low pressure membranes such as your micro filtration or ultra filtration are used to perform this solid liquid separation function. Okay. So, that is what actually happens in a uh, in a membrane bioreactor where there would be bacteria which will be kind of uh, growing when they consume the dissolved organic matters and in the process a lot of solid is generated and that solid is separated using a membrane. So, as we say that conventional or typical size of a microorganism or typical size of a bacteria is of the order of 1 micron. So, if we go for micro filtration which can filter say up to uh, 100 uh, particles larger than your uh, 100 nanometers or we go to ultra filtration which can filter particles of the order of say 10 nanometers or those way. So, we will that way be able to separate majority of the bacteria or majority of the biomass from the water and the water that we will get will actually be kind of clean water where solids and microorganisms will be retained on the other side of the membrane. So, that is what actually happens in these typical uh, membrane bioreactors. So, as the membrane uh, kind of replace the secondary sedimentation basin or secondary clarifier in an activated sludge process all floating materials are retained. Okay. So, uh, and this way the like we do not need your secondary sedimentation process and uh, we can actually have a higher sludge concentration as well within the reactor. Okay. So, we will have higher sludge concentration because of uh, our very good solid retention ability uh, because your uh, conventional secondary clarifier works on a principle of gravity. So, higher uh, because of the higher specific weight of the biomass they settle. 
but uh, for very fine particle this settling may not be that efficient. So, if it is a granulated or good biomass it will settle quickly, but alternatively if it is a kind of a system uh, which is kind of fluffy or there is a biogas entrapped in system. So, the settling is not that effective, but when you put a membrane, membrane system, so this uh, kind of retention is very good, retention of solids are very good with this membrane. And since we can retain lot of the uh, large portion or almost all of the sludge produced, so we will we can operate the reactors at higher sludge concentration and we can operate these reactors at sludge concentration as high as 10 to 20 grams per liter. At times even higher like up to 30 gram per liter can also be uh, used for th these systems. So, when we operate this at a higher uh, sludge concentration. So, they produce kind of very good effluent quality at lower reactor volume also. So, that way the performance would actually be better than the conventional activated sludge systems. So, higher sludge concentration is the main reason because if you have lot of biomass, so they will quickly degrade or decompose the organic matter present in the system. They will the rate of uh, organic matter decomposition will also be higher and that way the extent to which the BOD can be reduced or the extent to which the organic carbon concentration could be reduced in the water would be greater as opposed to the conventional activated sludge system. However, if there is lot of biomass, if there is higher quantity of biomass present in the system, so there are going to be the high oxygen demand as well. Because for the purpose of decomposing organic material, they will uh, the microorganisms will demand for oxygen. So, the oxygen demand of the waste increases that way, uh, they need higher uh, dissolved oxygen, but since there is lot of microorganisms, the water is actually or the waste water is actually the more viscous because of this thick sludge mass present and since it is the viscosity or lot of solid uh, these things uh, materials are present in the system. So, the rate of oxygen transfer also complicated and in fact, it decreased. So, at one place we have higher oxygen demand and the rate of oxygen transfer has that way decreased. So, therefore, the requirement of aeration is very critical in the membrane bioreactor systems. So, we must ensure that a good aeration system, a high end or a modern aeration system which can efficiently transfer the oxygen to the water medium must be present in a membrane bioreactor for the uh, ideal performance of these systems. So, that is how the oxygen requirement needs to be uh, kind of taken care of. Now, if we see the various configuration of uh, membrane bioreactor, so there are two popular configurations okay, of the membrane bioreactor. Uh, there is kind of external or side stream configuration which is the oldest uh, con, uh, configuration. So, when membrane bioreactors were planned initially it was planned this way only. So, in this configuration what happens that there is the membrane process is not within the reactor, but is outside the reactor in the and a side stream or a stream from the uh, reactor from your treatment system from activated sludge process say or uh, from your aeration basin is passed through this membrane. Okay. So, that is what happens in a external or side stream configuration when your membrane system is not in the reactor is outside the reactor. The other one we have is submerged or immersed configuration where your membrane system is actually within the aeration system. Okay. So, uh, this is called kind of immersed configuration or submerged configuration which has been developed late at a later stage for uh, for kind of reducing the energy requirement of the external systems. Uh, mixing these two kind of uh, a new configuration is being used nowadays and is being developed not that popular though still is the air lift side stream configuration, where the membrane is in the side stream, but it is not dry that way it is still the water is pushed through this and in the separate module. The, in a separate membrane module because uh, where the aeration is also provided. So, based on the air supply the we get a air reactor. So, based on this air supply 
and uh, this is kept in the suspension and that way like the membrane works within the wet system here within in fact membrane here also will be uh, immersed, but it is still it is in a side stream ok. It is not in the main aeration basin. So, that is what is the kind of uh, the different configuration. Now, these different configurations have different features. So, per se if you see the external or side stream system which is very simple you have a membrane bioreactor where there is aeration unit the water is taken to a membrane system outside and we get the effluent and the retainant or the concentrate is again pushed back to the reactor. So, this involves the recirculation of the mixed liquor through a membrane module that is outside the bioreactor ok. So, uh, this usually implies kind of uh, high cross flow velocity along with the. So, there will be basically a, uh, as we discussed in the previous uh, week the membrane processes could be the kind of uh, there is dead end system and there is a cross flow system. So, generally cross flow membranes are more preferred uh, in order to prevent the fouling as well. So, this is kind of also puts a high cross, uh, cross flow velocity along with the membrane and that way kind of controls the membrane falling also to some extent. So, this provide more direct hydrodynamic control of the membrane falling and offers kind of advantages in terms of easy membrane replacement because it is just outside we can take the membrane we can change it fix it ok. Uh, so, that is there and uh, plus we can actually pass the high flux through this ok. At a, uh, uh, but the problem is that energy consumption is quite high of the order of 2 to 12 kilowatt hours per meter cube of the water treated ok. So, that is uh, what is the problem otherwise it is efficient. So, in order to reduce the kind of energy consumption which is used in the uh, side stream membrane uh, bioreactors submerged or emerged configuration uh, was developed. So, in that one the bioreactor uh, the membrane system was within this bioreactor itself ok. So, what happens here that membrane modules are directly placed in this mixed uh, in this kind of mixed uh, liquor ok. So, what happens that the deriving force across the membrane is achieved by pressurizing the bioreactor or how we get the effluent is we can create the vacuum at one side. So, when you create the vacuum at one side it will suck the water through the membrane and that way we will get the uh, kind of uh, water towards the permit side and reject comes uh, with retains within the reactor ok. So, we do not need those kind of separate system or separate channel for all those things. So, that way the energy consumption here is lower ok. The cleaning process is uh, less rigorous it is within the system. So, it can be kind of uh, clean that way. So, they are the basic advantages of these submerged MBR submerged systems ok. The uh, kind of operating conditions are milder than external MBRs because of the lower tangential velocities. So, that is the kind of basic features over here and if we see the third configuration which is air lift side stream configuration. So, we will have kind of uh, air feed in coming ok air coming in and the feed comes from a bio bioreactor bio system over here. Okay, so, from here the feed comes and here the air supply is comes and then it passes through a membrane module and the permit is collect over here. So, this is a relatively recent configuration okay, which uses a robust and reliable side stream uh, configuration, okay, uh, but incorporates the advantages of low energy consuming submerged system as well. Okay. So, this configuration is getting quite popular ok has been used for treating variety of waste water including pharmaceutical landfill leachate toilet waste water municipal sewage. So, all those things it has been actually applied on. Now, one of the major problems of the membrane is the falling of membrane because once we are using a membrane process and that too for filtering a large particle like biomass ok. So, there is possibility of falling and that is one of the major drawbacks of these uh, membrane systems. So, this kind of uh, if membrane falling takes place this will reduce the membrane performance and membrane lifespan as well and that way we will have to basically for use the falling control measures or replace the membrane. So, it eventually increases uh, O&M cost of the system as well. 
So, membrane falling is kind of attributed to the basically suspended particles which are microorganisms and cell debris. There could be colloidal, solutes, sludge flocks, these actually deposits on the membrane surface okay, and then move on into the membrane pores. So, that way they can clog the membrane pores as well and that is how they lead to decline in the permeability of the membrane. So, the flow prevents the head loss increases quite a bit. Okay. So, uh, your system might actually be completely fail if you uh, if one is not able to control the membrane falling properly. So, this falling is typically resulted by these physicochemical interactions that takes place between the fallant and the membrane material. So, how how much they can attract these membrane materials or how it is getting diffused in the system. So, those kind of uh, things will be there. Now, uh, there are different uh, forms of falling in the membrane uh, reactors. There are, uh, it is not exactly form, we can say the different stages as well. So, pore narrowing, pore clogging or cake formation could take place in these membrane bioreactors. Okay. So, what happens that if you see the, uh, if you have let us say a very new membrane, so we will get the feed and we will get the permit pretty easily that way. Okay, uh, but uh, when this clogging is start, so what will happen first that uh, as a first step there will be first thing will be the pore narrowing. So, some of these uh, suspended particles, okay, suspended microorganisms or suspended those kind of things will get in trapped here. So, that way the pores of the membranes get narrowed down. Okay. So, that is what is the first stage of the uh, membrane falling when there its pores gets narrowed down. Then eventually when they get narrowed down and these things try to basically pass on, so they come over here and they can actually clog the pores. Okay. So, that becomes the pore clogging. So, that way they will uh, some material could actually diffused inside these pores and that way they can clog these pores. So, that is what is known as pore clogging and then eventually uh, at the end what we will see that if it is not removed because pore has clogged. So, things will come and stick over here, they do not have a passage to go anywhere. So, slowly we will see that kind of a formation of the cake takes place on the surface of membrane which is called the cake formation or the another stage of the membrane falling and then the flow through your membrane will be completely kind of stopped and uh, one will not be able to. Uh, kind of get the desired flow or desired treatment from these membrane systems or desired retention from these membrane system. So, that is how uh, basically the problem takes place. So, if we see there are uh, various factors that affect these uh, membrane fallings in uh, membrane bioreactors. Okay. Now, these are uh, can be categorized into three different categories. Okay. There are three basic falling factors. So, one is the feed and the biomass properties. So, how is the feed and what are its properties? So, like what is the MLSS concentration, there is uh, sludge apparent viscosity, extra polymeric substances, what is the flock size, alkinity and pH, salinity those kind of thing. Then there are membrane properties, so characteristic of the membranes in terms of what is uh, the material type, how much is the water affinity, the surface roughness, surface charge, what is the pore sizes, the type of material characteristics, all those things will come over here. And then at the end we have operating conditions which kind of are the hydrodynamic environment experienced by the membrane. So, what kind of environment membrane is having in which it is being operated. So, the mode of operation, rate of reaction, sludge retention time, hydraulic retention time, what is the food to microorganism ratio, organic loading rate, COD to nitrogen ratio, temperature, pH. So, all those things will come into the picture here. So, that way all these things eventually govern the fall, uh, kind of uh, govern the degree of uh, membrane following. Okay. How to control this? So, this there are anti falling measures which can be taken, which can be adopted for controlling the membrane falling. So, uh, those are kind of we can have air induced cross flow or gas bubbling, which can effectively remove the uh, 
whatsoever fallant has basically been deposited on the surface of membrane or at least remove uh, at least reduce their concentration reduce the degree of falling that uh, membrane has gone and, uh, under through. There are uh, intermittent uh, permeation or relaxation. So, what we can do that uh, the process when it is happening we can actually stop the process for some time if it is allowed to. Okay, if our filtration process, uh, filtration system is allowed to be stopped at regular intervals, so we should stop that at regular intervals. So, what happens that particles which has been deposited on the membrane surface will tend to diffuse back to the water and that way some actually to some degree these uh, reduction of the membrane falling could be uh, taking place just by stopping the flow through the membrane or just by removing the pressure. There are other means uh, like there are uh, chemically assisted backwashing where we can uh, have some kind of acidic or alkaline solutions depending on the nature of the fallen okay. and uh, or we can actually this can be done on a daily scale or we have intensive chemical cleaning procedures which can be taken once in a few months that way okay, once or twice in a year or that kind of system can also be taken. Then there are membrane backwashing which uh, we just can backwash it using a simple water or air jet that way. There are uh, various anti falling products available in the market. So, they also can be used for reducing this uh, membrane falling. So, if we see the advantages and disadvantages of these membrane system. So, uh, the membrane systems are quite compact. So, uh, because we do not need to go for a secondary settling thing, we do not need to have a sludge recycling mechanism. Uh, okay. uh, so, those, uh, those kind of things uh, can be taken off and that way the system would be quite compact, the area requirement is low and it can actually since there is lot of sludge or lot of biomass in the system which can be operated the system if system can be operated with a high amount of sludge. So, what will happen that when the uh, organic loading rate or uh, the kind of uh, BOD that is applied to the system to the aeration system can also be increased. So, our system will be able to withstand high organic loading rate and that way uh, we can actually make a compact system for same amount of the flow because we are permitted to load at a high higher organic loading rates. Uh, the effluent quality is good because of lot of as we discussed if there are a significant amount of biomass present in the system. So, they can decompose or degrade the organic matter at higher rates. Uh, there is high volumetric loading possible. So, organic loading as well as volumetric loading uh, we can increase. There is secondary clarifier and tertiary filtration process are eliminated usually. We are putting a water coming through a ultra uh, uh, coming through ultra filter or micro filter. So, the quality of water in terms of uh, solids removal and these things is pretty good and it is possible to convert an existing activated sludge process to membrane process by just putting through a membrane either in the reactor directly or through a side stream channel. So, that is also another advantage. On the disadvantages front there are aeration limitation as we discussed that it needs high end aeration. Okay. Uh, the high operation and capital cost is there we are going to work with a membrane. So, the cost increases the and uh, particularly the water has to be passed through uh, membrane under pressure condition. So, the energy cost will also be increases. So, it is an energy intensive process. The membrane uh, complexity and falling, so managing the membranes, operating the membranes and dealing with the membrane falling is another disadvantages and it may need equalization for highly variable flow if those kind of flow is expected. So, similar to activated sludge process this also may need a, a kind of equalization tank. So, if we see the applicability front membrane reactors are used throughout the world for industrial as well as municipal uh, wastewater systems. Uh, these are suited for advanced wastewater treatment also because uh, as we discussed that uh, we are using the membrane processes. So, uh, which comes under advanced wastewater treatment category. It can be used for high strength wastewater even if particularly the biodegradable wastewater of high strength. So, uh, it will be doing the job at much higher uh, degradation rate as conventional activated sludge process because of higher retention of the biomass or higher retention of the sludge in the system. 
and it that way it can be actually used for on site reuse option the water we are getting is uh, filtered from a ultra filter or nano filter so uh, ultra filter or micro filter so that way it can be reused that way uh, for industrial wastewater uh, this is also a very popular uh, treatment system nowadays okay and there are various full scale applications in variety of industrial sectors such as foods petrochemicals pharmacy electronics uh, paper, pulp and paper, textile, agriculture and uh, kind of uh, other industries as well including hospitals. So, that is about the uh, membrane bioreactors or MBER systems. There is another system which is getting quite popular these days is MBBR which is uh, moving bed bioreactors or um, moving bed biofilm reactors. So, these moving bed biofilm reactors like MBR we saw that in a conventional activated sludge process if we add a membrane step, a membrane filtration step we call that as a membrane bioreactors. So, that is just a modification of a conventional activated sludge process. Similarly, this MBBR is also a modification of conventional activated sludge process usually however, it is not necessarily has to be aerobic system we can modify the anaerobic system as well. Same with the uh, MBR also, it is not necessarily has to be kind of aerobic system, we can put a membrane with anaerobic biological systems as well. So, in MBBR uh, how we do this modification, so like in MBR we modify by putting a membrane here we uh, as the name itself suggests that biofilm reactor. So, we integrate the concept of a biofilter process with a conventional activated sludge process. So, conventional activated sludge process by definition is a suspended growth system uh, uh, and uh, the biofilter process is by definition an attached growth system. So, we basically combine these concept of suspended growth and attached growth system so that we can actually uh, get the advantages of both while reducing the limitation of both. So, limitation of the suspended growth system is that biomass retention is difficult and we have to have a kind of secondary clarifier and those kind of thing and then biomass recirculation is needed. Those are the limitation of conventional activated sludge processes. The limitation of biofilter processes is basically when the growth is attached and we are having a media which is kind of uh, fixed bed media. So, what happens that growth takes place only on those media and as a result uh, where there is not media. So, large portion of the tank could actually be remain unutilized. So, these both these limitations are taken care of both these limitations get away when we go for a moving bed biofilm reactor or MBBR system. So, what happens that within this reactor we put a media which is kind of a floating media inert floating media. So, that media also remain in the suspension and the growth takes place on that media. So, growth is attached, but that attached growth is also in suspension. So, that is how it combines the concept of suspended and attached growth system together. So, the major important aspect of the moving bed biofilm reactors is biofilm carriers. Okay. Otherwise, it is essentially similar as an activated sludge process. So, apart from that, uh, if we are saying it uh, for aerobic systems, so apart from that, uh, apart from your conventional activated sludge process, we do have a biofilm carrier which is kind of a media. So, this process utilizes this inert media as biofilm carriers which operate in the mixed motion. This media provides increased surface area for the microorganisms to attach and grow and the whole tank volume is used for this growth which is not the case with most of the uh, conventional biofilm reactor. So, that is how we get the additional advantages of the system. Okay. So, this media will look like this, these are some of the kind of examples of media it could be like this, it could be like this or in the system the after the growth has taken place it will look like this and a closer loop you can see that the growth of the biofilm has taken place on this media. Now, these carriers are made of materials with a density which is close to the density of water. Why? Because we do not want them to settle in the system right. If you are having a very high specific gravity, so what will happen that uh, they will settle in the system, they will try to settle in the system, we will have a much larger 
mass of the media or much larger uh, fraction of the media towards the lower part in the reactor. If we go for a very low specific gravity, so it will actually start floating. So, much larger portion of the media will actually be floating in the water near the top. Still your majority of the reactor across the depth will be empty and there would not be much advantages of using this media. So, that is why it is made with the particles which have density close to that of water. So, for purpose like HDEPs uh, which has a density around 9.95 gram per cc is one of the preferred uh, kind of uh, material for making these biofilm carriers or media. So, it has a density close pretty close to uh, water and that is why when it is in the water it actually in, remains in the suspension it floats it covers the entire mass and that is how it is actually quite helpful in the water. So, this high density uh, population of bacteria that is achieved uh, ensures high rate biodegradation within the system okay, and that also offers the process reliability because back, um, biomass is attached to the system so do, do, they do not leave the system. There is no need of uh, maintaining food to microorganism ratio as, meat, as the biomass is retained in the system itself. Only thing is that we actually uh, like to the exit point uh, we have to put a filter kind of thing so that it does not go in the exit. So, in order to prevent these uh, these uh, carriers we have to put some sort of uh, filter or just a mesh kind of thing which uh, which prevents these carriers to wash off uh, from the system. So, these carriers are mixed in the tank by aeration or mixing system we can have aeration or mixing system. Okay where it is agitated continuously and uh, that way it is ensured and we can have a sieve at the outlet to prevent uh, these uh, escaping of this carrier from the system. Okay. And as better the contact between the substrate in the effluent and the biomass that uh, will actually kind of improve the degradation rate or the extent of degradation. So, maintenance of this MBBR system including the screening, influent equalization, clarifier system, sludge handling uh, all means the essential part would still be there. So, this typical MBBR process if we see uh, we can have this thing by uh, putting a mixer if it is a anaerobic system or if it is aerobic system just by the virtue of aeration uh, when we pass the air or oxygen they can remain in the mixing. And we can have all those configurations as we discussed with the conventional processes for the COD, BOD removal if you want to have a nitrification system or if you want to have a added nitrogen removal with denitrification system as well. So, combination of aerobic, anaerobic, primary clarifier, secondary clarifier those kind of thing all those process can remain there. The only difference here is that it is based with the media. So, that is how it is advantageous. The major advantages include low power consumption upgradation and mobility. So, we can upgrade the existing system by just putting carriers in that one. The flexibility of adopting fluctuating hydraulic and organic loading rate. So, because the biomass grows on attached media. So, the stability is better aesthetically uh, looks ok. The disadvantages is that the we need to change the media after some time once this enough growth has taken place and then diffus diffusion limitation comes across. So, those things needs to be kind of taken care of it may generate some order and the cost of running is little higher than the conventional system. So, there have been basically quite a few MBBR installation in India uh, around 2010 or 12 there has been some over 3 400 installations nowadays it is much more. Uh, more so ever basically in the building complex various uh, uh, high end residential building complex or ind industrial building complex this is used. So, uh, it have given a good performances however, there has been certain issues as well. So, issues such as kind of uh, clogging because of non availability of primary sedimentation uh, or screens uh, because these complexes they do not go for the full process. So, if they just end up having an MBBR so those kind of things can come in there is a limitation of the dissolved oxygen also for the effectiveness of biofilm. So, that could be there and uh, what it has been observed, observed in Indian condition that the nutrient removal has been observed lesser as opposed to which is traditionally claimed with these systems. These installations has been of the order of uh, 10 meter cube per day to several MLDs okay. and uh, 
kind of there has been growing interest on this there uh, in the uh, particularly there are statutory bodies also which are forcing the uh, kind of uh, multi story complexes coming in big cities to go for their own sewerage treatment system. So, uh, because of the complexity involved with operating in the membrane system or those kind of thing it is very challenging for the uh, units to install and maintain such system. This is rather simpler system uh, which can produce a better quality effluent than the conventional system. So, uh, many of these people are going for these systems and that way uh, dealing or hand that way kind of dealing their wastewater generated within the periphery and putting them for some reuse in the gardening or horticulture purpose that way. So, with this we uh, conclude this uh, week's discussion on to the, the different alternate configurations of the wastewater treatment systems. So, um, by far we have discussed uh, most of the aspects related to the uh, treatment related to starting from the generation, quantification, qualitative analysis, then uh, treatments. So, we kind of summarize this discussion here and in the following two weeks uh, starting next week onwards, we will be discussing the recycling of the wastewater or approach for the recycling and reuses for the wastewater. So, see you next week and thanks for joining a good time.